In this problem, we're told a skateboarder with an initial speed of 2 meters per second rolls virtually friction-free down a straight incline with a length of 18 meters in 3.3 seconds. At what angle theta is the incline oriented above the horizontal? So let's draw an image of what's going on here. So imagine this is going to be the incline, right? And so this is our incline. And so we know it's going to have some angle theta, right? So this is the angle theta above the horizontal. So what do we know? So we know the initial speed of our skateboarder, so imagine this is going to be our skateboarder, right? We know their initial speed is going to be 2 meters per second. And so they're going to roll down this incline with a length of 18 meters. So the length of this is going to be 18 meters, and they're going to do it in 3.3 seconds. So let's write down our given. So given, what are we told? So we're told that the initial velocity, or v sub 0, is going to be 2 meters per second. So two meters per second for that. We know that the change in, or the length of this, right? I'm just gonna call it L. The length in this, or essentially like the change in your position, right, is gonna be 18 meters. So 18 meters. And then we also know the time this is gonna take 3.3 seconds. So 3.3 seconds. So that's that. And then keep in mind what they're asking. We're trying to find the angle theta. So I'm gonna say theta equals question mark because that's what we're solving for. So in order to solve this problem and solve for this, what we need to do first is find the acceleration. And so the way we're going to do that is by using uh, the kinematic equations, and we're going to solve for the acceleration of uh, the skateboarder, right, at this angle uh, in this direction. So the way we're going to do that is using one of the kinematic equations, which is essentially delta x, or your length that you travel, equals v sub 0 times t plus 1 half a t squared. So this is a kinematic equation. Hopefully you know how to do these by now, but we're just going to plug in our distance, plug in our initial velocity, and then plug in our time, and we can get the acceleration of our of our skateboarder at this angle, right? Or going down this. And so let's plug everything in. So 18 equals v sub 0, which is 2, times t, which is 3.3, plus 1 half a times 3.3 squared. So 2 times 3.3 is 6.6. I'm going to minus it to the other side, so 6 .6, or 18 minus 6.6 .6 is 11.4, so equals 1 half times a times 3.3 .3 squared. So if you go ahead and do this, if you multiply both sides by 2, or you do 2 times 3.3 .3 squared, or 1 half times 3.3 .3 squared, you're going to get it equals 11.4, which equals 5.445a. So divide both sides by... 5.445 and you're going to get what a equals so if you do this you're going to get a equals 2.0937 meters per second squared so this will be the acceleration going down at this going down this incline right so this is our acceleration and so uh what we're going to do is uh the first thing i want you to understand is we know the sum of the forces uh some of the forces equals mass times acceleration and so what we're going to want to do is draw a free body diagram what's going on it's going it, to you'll hopefully you'll be able to understand it but so this is going to be our free body diagram so imagine this is the incline and this box right here is going to be our skateboarder so this is our skateboarder here I'm trying to draw it at this angle but this is going to be our skateboarder so what do we know about this so we know straight down it's going to have a force acting on it right because this is a free body diagram we draw the forces what they do and so this is going to be mass times gravity, right? It's always going to have this force if we're or wherever you're at. So mass times gravity is the force acting down on the box. But what this tells us is what you want to do here is actually let me draw this going up into the top in the center. And so what we know is that it's also going to have a like the normal force acting up on it perpendicular, right? So it's going to have something like this, so like a perpendicular force. This is the normal force. And then what we can do is connect these, and it's going to kind of look like a triangle. And I'm going to call this angle theta right here. So this is theta. And so what you need to know about this, and I'll show you why this works out, is this angle theta, our incline, is going to be equal to this angle theta right here, which is pretty cool. But uh, what we want to do in order to solve for it is we're going to label this. So what I want you to do is imagine this as a right triangle, right? So I'm just going to draw this, but at like a different angle so you can kind of see it better. So this is going to be theta. And so we know mg is uh, going to be the hypotenuse. So this is mg, our hypotenuse of this. So 
this is going to be uh, our triangle. And so what we're trying to do is label each of these sides. So essentially these sides right here. And so, uh, yeah, so we're going to label these. And so keep in mind that this is, my drawing doesn't really do it that good, but this is more like this and it's kind of like at an angle. So this line right here, this triangle wasn't that good, but imagine it's at an angle right here like this. And so this line right here is going to be at the same incline as this line right here. Right, so this is going to be in the same direction as this, so it's more looks like that. So this is uh, going to be our triangle, and so what we're going to want to do is find each of these lengths, and so we're going to use trig to do that. So you know the sine of an angle, or theta in this case, if I label these x and y, we know the sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so y over opposite over hypotenuse, mg. If we multiply both sides by mg, you're going to get it's mg times the sine of theta. And so this right here is going to be this length right here, so mg times the sine of theta. And then this one right here, if we do the cosine of an angle, equals x adjacent over hypotenuse. So essentially it's just going to be mg times the cosine of theta. So actually let me draw a line like this, mg times the cosine of theta. So Keep in mind what I said earlier when the sum of all the forces equals ma. And so you generally base this off the direction. So what's in this direction? What What is our force in this direction? Well, the sum of all forces is just mg times the sine of theta, right? It's going to be this, right, in this direction. So the sum of all the forces is just mg times the sine of theta, right? So we can just say ma, right, equals, right, mg times the sine of theta, right? This is the sum of all the forces in this direction. Right, And so keep in mind, we know the acceleration in this direction. That's what we just solved for. So what we can do is actually go ahead and solve for theta, right? And that's going to be solving for this angle. But keep in mind, they're the same angle, essentially. Because the way this works, it kind of props it up. It's kind of hard to imagine. But imagine when this gets propped up, this change in this angle, however more we go up like this, it's going to prop this up even more. So notice how our m's will cancel. So essentially, a equals g times the sine of theta. And so... What we can do is just divide both sides by g. So we know the sine, we do it over here, sine of theta equals a over g. And then if we want to just sine, uh, solve for theta, just do the arc sine. So the arc sine of a over g uh, is equal to theta. And so we know a and we know g. What is g? The force of gravity. And then a is just what we solve for, 2.0937. So we're going to take the arc sine of 2.0937 and divide it by g, the force of gravity, 9.8. So if you go ahead and do this, uh, you're going to get it equals 12.34 degrees. Uh, you can just round, so it's going to be about 12 degrees. So yeah, it's going to be 12 degrees, and so that's going to be your answer to this problem. And so the key takeaway from this problem is just that uh, mg times the sine of theta, as long as... Uh, it's frictionless, right? They tell us it's frictionless. So you can use this formula, mg times the sine of theta equals ma. And just know your theta is going to be the same as the incline. So I'd recommend just memorizing that formula. Uh, I just kind of tried to explain to you how it works. But if you just memorize that formula, what you can do is uh, solve for theta or solve for a if you're given the angle. But yeah, let's just memorize this formula, uh, ma equals mg times the sine of theta. But yeah, your answer to this problem is going to be 12 degrees. And so hopefully you found this useful.